You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 17th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where, inspired by Hamilton, we're currently writing the libretto to J.B. Pritzker, the musical. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. <laughs> yeah. You think we're kidding about that, but... Yeah. Well, you know, he's... <laughs> JB's already, already lived to a <laughs> JB's already lived to a ripe old age, and he's rich, and he's not an immigrant, so that's we can't steal everything from Hamlet or from ha- Hamilton, rather Hamlet or Hamilton. Yeah. No, either one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's... But I, I figure a billionaire with a fleece vest. Yes, that he thinks is slimming, mm-hmm. and uh, it's not. You know, yeah. and he's an average guy, except yeah. he's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and and uh, he's competent. That's the nice part about him. Here's the thing: he's competent. He uh, a crisis presented itself um, to this country. Multiple crises have presented themselves. Mm-hmm. Bang, 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 in, in very quick order. And you really can sort of size people up by how they're dealing with something that is very bad. I, I've told the mm-hmm. story before about um, the the I was a very very small part of the Chicago response to Katrina. Yes, and right. it was incredibly impressive to see. Oh, when you put competent people in charge of shit, um, they get stuff done. Even when they've made a mistake, they correct it overnight. Literally, they picked the wrong location for the relocation center. It wasn't going to work. There was no air conditioning. It was not possible to fix it. In one night, they changed all the directions around. They re- re- relocated everything and got it all up and running because they put competent people who understood logistics and. Um, disaster recovery and right. tragedy and counseling and how to contact relatives and all that shit in charge of things and step back and say, what do you need? You know, well, as soon as the crisis is over, we will take our tents down. We'll go back to doing what we did. But what do you need to fix this? And there was no uh, shopping list too extravagant. There were questions asked, but the phone company delivered boxes and boxes of cell phones. Right, um, right. It just was like this is this is how you do shit. There are volumes on the shelf. Barack Obama left on the shelf of the White House a pandemic response playbook, which Donald Trump threw in the shitter because it was touched by a black man. And now right. we are in yep. this horrible place. And you know, it's it's and all every governor is in the same boat yeah. of we know we're on our own. We know there's not going to be any leadership out of Washington on this. We're on our own. So the ones that knew that we need a strategy uh-huh. <laughs> that, is, that isn't suck Donald Trump's toe. Right. Took it upon themselves. They communicate with each other. They come up with logistics. There are people sending, P- P- you know, Governor Cuomo is sending PPE out to other states now, as he said he would. Right. Well, you had governors like, I know a guy who knows a guy who's in Korea. And we'll uh-huh. buy some and we'll, we'll take it to the airport. We have to bypass it because Trump's goons are out there commandeering shit mm-hmm. that we're ordering for mm-hmm. our own state. That's how we had to go to war with our own federal government right, just right. to save people's lives. And that war is not over. They're nope. still trying to kill Americans in very large numbers through negligence and incompetence and for the greater glory of, of the dear leader. And you really can see the, the Republican governors who have not yet been willing to say, fuck it. I, my constituents' lives, the kids' lives in my state matter more than me appeasing the dear leader. All the Republican governors in all the Republican states uh, uh, who have decided to just sit on their hands and, and do nothing or worse, refuse to do any – take active measures to prevent people from protecting themselves, mm-hmm. that's where all the spikes are. And, it's and there just, are a couple of Republican governors who have not done that, who have listened to right. science and well, are really I mean. furious with – the White the, House. So, the ones who have yeah. decided that I'm not going to let my constituents die to appease Donald Trump's ego. Because mm-hmm. you know what? Here's the dirty secret. They all think he's going to lose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. they, and, and they really are lashing themselves to the mast of a ship that's going down. Right. And they're like, they want to be on that last lifeboat that just gets off the deck just before. And so they're willing to do what any 
competent public servant should do, which is how do I save the most number of people who are under my How do I make sure there's enough ICU beds for the crisis that is coming? Yep. How do I I invoke the World War II rule uh, uh to get people mass producing PPE? You said to me this morning that you feel as though we've entered the last reel of the wrath of Khan with Trump. Yeah, it really is. It really is. It's just, and I've, I've done the Photoshop before and I mentioned this before. It really is, you know, for hate's sake. <laughs> I spit <laughs> my last word. I, from hell's heart. It really is just this incredibly evil scumbag who 97% of Republicans love, which means 97, 97% of Republicans are complete cultural dead loss they're absolutely beyond redemption and salvation you can forget about them we want them to have health care we want them to have good food and clean water but when it comes to dealing with them as a member of your fucking species forget it they hate you in terms they, of political debate yeah. we're not interested no, right no, and, and they're <laughs> they're actively working to try to destroy everything that you hold dear and they're not mm-hmm. going to stop when donald trump is gone they're just not well but, I, I think what's going to happen if we're going to pull out old movies. Yes. Uh, why not? We're good at that. <laughs> why not? We're good we'll, at we'll that. We excel at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think after Trump is gone, it's going to be, you know, the wedding scene in Monty Python's Holy Grail of, this is a happy occasion. Yeah. Let's <laughs> not argue and bicker about who killed who. Who killed who. You and I can see it coming. I've written enough about it. I've, I wrote a long thing today about the great reset has begun because Bill Crystal did a tweet and did a thing on the bulwark, which got him on MSNBC saying, you know, part of me thinks the Republican party might just be a complete loss. You know, they're just, mm. well, well, and Kevin, Kevin McCarthy said uh-huh. that uh, if the Democrats sweep in 2020, they'll, they won't win elections anymore. The Republicans will After never that, win. Republicans well, won't win elections anymore. And I said, well, yeah, that's the point. Yeah. You tried to take away my health insurance. Did you think I forgot that? What Bill Crystal is doing is trying to get back on television because he's mm-hmm. since he mm-hmm. lost his weekly standard, they don't invite him to up to the big house much no more. Mm-hmm. So he's mm-hmm. using his his powerhouse bulwark connections to say, but if you read the article carefully, he centers the beginning of all human history in 2016. Of course he does. There are the people who wrecked the Republican Party. Those are the Trumpists. And they all happened after 2016. And they're not, not going to listen to us because you know what? We were right about Trump. We were right about him. We were right. They, they don't want to listen to us. You weren't right about Sarah Palin. Yeah. Well, again, that happened, <laughs> in, the be- that happened in the before time, Blue Gal. <laughs> we don't talk about the before time. It makes Don't it forget, makes- folks, that Bill Crystal's the one who handpicked Sarah Palin. As it's, the awesome solution to John McCain's problems. Now how much would you pay? But wait, there's so much more in <laughs> Bill Crystal's so background. Poor. There's so much blood <laughs> and bullshit and looting and corruption and stupidity. and Bad writing, getting fired over and over again. Yeah, And, and then rehired by yeah. God knows who for God knows what reason. But let's all remember, that's mm-hmm. why he wrote an article saying essentially the Republican Party is probably a, a loss. You know, it's probably a dead loss. It's probably not worth saving. And... The reason is because Trump and 2016 right. and the people who sided with him are the real reason. There's there's an absolute lack of acknowledgement that anything happened before 2016 at all. This is exactly how they got themselves off the hook last time. And they will continue to do this until the until, until the, it doesn't well, work. Well, yeah. until yeah. other people control the cameras. I mean, let's yeah. You, yeah, if you'd, that's like, true. To, that's if you'd true. like to jump ahead to Mika. Brzezinski <laughs> today, oh my God, in, in on Morning Joe, which I don't watch, but was sent along to me by several thousand people. So I mm-hmm. sort of had to. Um, people do that with you. Yeah. Yes, they do. Uh, Mika Brzezinski um, on the Morning Joe show today uh, announcing that Donald Trump was way worse than anyone thought he would be. We never thought he would be seeing this. Nobody did. And everybody who cried election morning <laughs> knew what was coming. Well, and and the, between Eric Bollard, bless his heart, and Soledad O'Brien, mm-hmm. and you, I, I went into your archives and said, here's all the times that Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough put Donald Trump on the air for free. Gave him free right. fucking airtime, stroked his mm-hmm. ego, told him what a great man he was. Let him and, tone in. But that yeah, He all didn't happened. even have to get his pants on. Right. You know? 
And and even after he was elected, helping him, you know, going down and partying with him at his resort. Writing his speeches for him. Writing his speeches him. for him. And, and really trying to groom him in a way that they knew would probably be impossible to be someone who wasn't going to be a complete fucking a total fat. A total fuckwad, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. It, but remember, all of that happened in the before time. So we don't talk about that. And the reason you don't talk about that is because Joe Scarborough controls the camera. So no mm-hmm. one who could show up on the set say, well, wait a minute. Didn't you do this and this and this and this is Here ever. Here are all the tweets from yeah. Morning Joe about on the phone now, Donald Trump. Yeah, which are all in your archives. And and again, yeah. Soledad O'Brien, bless her heart. And, and and here's all the things you could have been asking Donald Trump about when you had him on your show and you didn't do mm-hmm. that because you're a fucking suck up. Eric Bollard, like I could go on like this for days. Here's this and here's this and here's this. Mm-hmm. None of that will reach the mainstream political discussion because there's been a decision made at some very high executive level that we're simply not going to acknowledge that right. anything before 2016 yeah, you're never trump or never trumpers that's yeah. what we are yeah everybody remembers and that's what put uh, us uh, well and that that's what ma- this is the thing that i wrote about which okay. if if you were right about trump in 2016 mm-hmm. you are a special you are marked by a special grace among conservatives uh, elite conservatives, Bill Crystal and and, and the Never Trumpers, you you have a mark of special grace. You have special genius insight. You know shit. You saw it coming. We were so wise. All right, if you were right about Trump from 2016, you are a saint, a martyred saint, but you're a saint. But if you were right about the right for the last 30 years, as opposed you're to the invisible. last three years, you are fucking <laughs> invisible. We do not want to hear from you. Shut yep. up and go away and sit down. And this from our allies as well as our opponents, people who don't mm-hmm. want to talk about what happened before then because it might screw everything up. It might, it might, who knows, Trump might win. And that's actually the pitch that Charlie Sykes makes on his podcast this very mm-hmm. week, which was, if anything can save Donald Trump, it's the woke left <laughs> and their crazy woke leftness and their extremeness. That's the one thing that might drag victory from the jaws of defeat for donald trump is the is the is because the left the the progressive left quote is losing its mind that'd be you and me blue gal and so we're the i don't know what what i'm sitting here in my living room yeah in front of a microphone yeah getting ready to vote for joe biden i know but apparently something white guy yeah but the the worst things in the world are what's going on in some obscure college campuses somewhere and, and apparently I, I want to abolish the suburbs. You do. And you know that's true. <laughs> you know that's true. Because we live. That is there. such a dog whistle. That well, is such a racist. Anyway. Within, said, within two months. Trump is a racist who says racist things. Yes. yes. Within two months, he's going to be screaming, wake up, white people. Yeah. Wake up. That, yeah. That, that, you know, and he'll go full Archie Bunker. Yeah. The C words are coming. I mean, he, uh-huh, that's uh-huh. where he's headed. Yeah, the, last night it was apparently breathtaking, breaking news. I, it was kind of cool to watch, but uh, to watch Mary Trump, yeah, um, say because uh, Rachel Maddow was like, uh, "Did you ever hear him say the N word? Did you ever see?" Because yeah, and this yeah. sort of like, and she, <laughs> and she she built this entire elaborate question, like, was it just part of the ambient environment, or did you actually hear it? Or yeah, I heard him. Yeah, he said it all the time. <laughs> oh, really? He said this. Oh, yeah. And anti-Semitic stuff, sure. <laughs> You're like, yep. oh, okay. Well, and and again, and I gotta say, uh, Mary Trump had the right answer, which is which should come as a surprise to no one. This it is should not totally come as a surprise to no one. Right. Yes, but apparently this is big news, so we need to report it on our little podcast, or we'll be accused of, I don't know, cancel culture or some horrible huh? thing. Speaking of cancel culture, yes. Um, I would love your take because you and I have not really discussed this. How, Your take on the whole Barry Weiss thing. Oh, I was going to say, isn't it a shame that uh, uh, liberal cancel culture ruined the career of Jefferson Beauregard Sessions? I <laughs> I feel so bad that liberal cancel culture reached down into the race in the deepest, reddest part of America. And uh, as Well, wrote- you know, 10, ten Grain at Mock Paper Scissors has a line at his blog mm-hmm. that is a... a a refrain of Doug Jones is the luckiest some bitch yes, on the planet. He really is. He really and is. he handpicked his his opponent again in yes, Tommy Tuberville. Yeah. Tommy Tuberville, who basically ran a Ponzi scheme investment thing that yeah. the investors lost all their money. 
and he skated away. Yes. And he is getting, as a football former football coach, one of the largest pensions from the taxpayers mm -hmm. of the state of Alabama. Yeah. Uh, Where you used to live, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, where I I live for 14 years. All my children were born in Alabama. Yeah. So I know Alabama politics. Uh and then <laughs> the latest thing. By the way, everybody go follow Alabama Democrats on Twitter if yeah. you're on Twitter. They are taking no prisoners. Yeah. And it is wonderful to see. Uh pointing out that uh one of Tommy Tuberville's players raped a lady. Uh-huh. And uh Tommy suspended him for one game. Well, you know, you got to do something. <laughs> got to do something. You know, I, uh, I, and and Alabama Democrats are saying, look, the Klan killed four little girls, right? And Doug Jones got justice, right, for the killers he of did. those four little girls after all those years at the Baptist Church in Birmingham. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. It took it took decades, but there was justice for those murdered children. children. Mm -hmm. That's right. Tommy Tuberville suspended a guy for a game. Now, who's yeah. going to keep your children safe? Mm -hmm. Well, again, face with the there, choice. This is hand picking, hand picking your opponent. Yeah, he's 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 not Roy Moore. I will say, Tommy Tuberville is one step up from Roy yeah, Moore, well, but that's this about is, it. This is, I mean, we're so deep into the uh, infrared spectrum of crazy right. that that the distinction between levels of despicable awfulness are almost invisible to the naked eye. Well, yeah, and well, now that the Republican Party doesn't really stand for much right. of anything. Well, that's not true. They stand for a human, a, 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 a shoe stamping on a human face forever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is, and, and here, this is a face of the choice between a Trump-loving, hates doing racist, mm -hmm. who at least mm -hmm. nominally believe in the rule of law, and a Trump-loving, right. hates doing racist, who doesn't give a shit about the rule of law. Right, right, The Trump-loving, right. hates doing racist Republican voters of Alabama went to the polls, did exactly what you expect them to do. They voted right. for the worst possible choice. That's so, right. You know, and why did they do it? They did it because Donald Trump told them to. Donald Trump told them to. When we talk and about- And that is what, re think about Republican primary voters in Alabama. Yeah. When we talk That's about- That's what they did. I'm going to vote for that coach. When we talk about reprogrammable meat bags, mm -hmm. that's who we mean. Oh, he's Donald Trump said he was a bad man, so I'm going to vote for him. Did you think about this at all? No, not at all. Donald Trump said it was okay. Well, what about the, mm -hmm. I don't know about nothing about that. I saw Donald Trump said he was a bad man, so I'm not going to vote for him. Like, oh, yeah. you just basically. You, you voted for him seven times. Yeah. Through the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s, you voted for him. No, he's a bad like, man. He was a multiple multiple term senator. Donald Trump's his bad man. So you didn't Yeah, so we're do? done. Yeah. And right, that's right. And really that's It's a cult. It's just, a cult. You put a period yeah. because the, there's nothing there's no there's no gray matter in that skull to reason with. No. It's just no. a bunch of fucking bumper stickers and Sean Hannity talking points rattling around in a big empty dumb redneck head. And that's the right, Republican now, party. Now, now let's let's go on and talk about Barry Weiss and she went gold. Well, we're going to elevate the culture a little bit. Uh, we're going to elevate the discussion. And uh, yes, uh, this was the week. I mean, really, this was the week that America lost its the cream of its intellectual <laughs> crop, really. I mean, you know. I've already stopped caring about her. Yeah. Like, okay, you know. bye. <laughs> she just, she she had a talent for having really bad opinions. She really, uh, just, why are you there? <laughs> what did yeah. you do to get to this exalted position and you're using it to just rub your ass all over the op-ed page and say the dumbest shit possible and then whine and bitch like a child because people are calling you on your incredibly stupid takes. And hey, mm -hmm. here's a thought. One of you's not enough. Let's get Brett Stevens on board, also from the <laughs> Wall Street Journal, to have equally shitty takes about everything. And then we can complain as, as we look at our stigmata about how cruelly mm -hmm. we are being flogged by the liberal <laughs> mob. Yeah, And yeah. so my theory is that she and Andrew Sullivan are quitting on the same day to go start their own band. The, I call them the Caviling Wilburys. Um, <laughs> and cavil means to quibble over insignificant shit that doesn't right. matter. So right. it, it it is, it is a, and she just wrote this long, self-pitying letter about why she has to quit and At the liberal mom. Right .com. Yes. Yeah. And yep. Andrew Sullivan quit today on New Yorker magazine. And in his first sentence, he said, I'm not going to make this about cancel culture. And then he spent the better part of 12 <laughs> paragraphs in this 
long, self-aggrandizing, self-pitying, whining about, I don't have to write in a crouch anymore, protective crouch anymore. I can really tell you what I think. And how college campuses are shit and they're just full of liberal Uh Nazis and and blah, 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 blah. So uh, they're both going away, but they're not going away. Um, and, uh, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. I mean, yeah, Andrew we won't Sullivan, miss them for very long. Cause they'll be, they'll, they'll be, be on back. Twitter and well, Andrew have Sullivan, some bulwark well, thing to do, or Andrew Sullivan will have, uh, is going back to his blog, uh, which is now going to be in Substack, And he's going <laughs> to do, he's going to do this thing called a podcast because you can't have too many of those. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just, I get this feeling that you and I are just going to be crowded out of the marketplace by. Um, no. What is it? Godwin's law. You know, good money, bad money drives out good. It's shitty, shitty podcasts, and and precious <laughs> conservatives drive everyone else out of the marketplace. Um, so uh. no, this has been a week where the most elite, effete, privileged, um, um, closeted. He's talking about Tucker Carlson. Delicate. Folks. <laughs> whiny white people have white felt just yes. incredibly <laughs> incredibly put upon to the point where they have to in the middle of a pandemic with 1.3 million people declaring unemployment every week decide you know what i'm just not going to do this new york times job anymore <laughs> you know what yeah. this, this new york magazine job i just can't do it anymore i'm going to go over here and do my blog and i know people will pay me for that so that's great like have brianna taylor's murderers been arrested yet no no Okay, the, I, the just biggest wanted problem, that, I wanted to insert that into the conversation well, while we're. And I, I do want to mention while we're that we're so worried about Barry Weiss's career. <laughs> yeah, well, and Barry Weiss will do fine. She'll find a, she'll she'll be over on the bulwark before you know it. And and Andrew Sullivan gave uh, gave me the opportunity to dig back through my archives, um, because he he did write that he wants to do a new a brand new thing. His brand new thing is going to be without uh, without. We're, they're, they're going to debate everything without personal abuse or questioning their motives. And I took exception to that because I spent 15 years abusing Andrew Sullivan and questioning his motives and his judgment <laughs> every week uh, to the point where he once emailed me and said, why are you coming after me so hard? <laughs> and I said, as I recall, dude, you do this to everybody. So how is it? It's not OK to do it to you. And that was the last time I ever heard from Andrew Sullivan. You know what he did? He well, canceled you, me, Blue Gal. He had receipts. He, he canceled receipts me. receipts of what he did, too. Well, I mean, you he, were not, no, not no, paying I, attention I, to no. Andrew Sullivan. Right. But he canceled me. Uh-huh. He, he did liberal cancel culture on me. Cancel culture. And yeah. then he goes on to, to talk about what, what his conservatism really means, <laughs> which is Lord. adorable because his conservatism is about legalizing drugs and criminal justice reform and marriage equality and wealth redistribution and climate change. I'm like, oh, you're a liberal. But of course, mm-hmm. you can't be a liberal because then you'd just be one of a million no other liberals. For that, right, right? Right. So you have to be this, as I described back in 2009, this rare political minotaur that no one's <laughs> ever seen before. You're a haploid minotaur. You're not one thing or the other because if you were just another fucking liberal who's been who was 20 years too late to the party, no one would pay you to hear mm-hmm. anything you have to say, and that's mm-hmm. unacceptable. So he has so. As I, I've sort of been wandering all over the place, but the reason this is happening now is because for these people, they need to be in the middle of something between two things. They need to be t- between two extremes. And right now, there aren't two extremes. There's one extreme. So yeah. how does Charlie He's suck- really sucking all the oxygen out of every conversation on purpose. Yes. I mean, that is Donald Trump's technique. Right. And now he's got Roger Stone to help him. And so it's it's going to be a nonstop flamethrower mm-hmm. of obscene violence yeah racism and just trickery, the worst just the right? worst kind of bullshit and, and so you have one side is truly extreme but you have mm-hmm. this entire ecosystem of of media celebrity creatures you have barry weiss and you have andrew sullivan and, and charlie sykes and and michael gerson all the rest of those people who can't function in an environment unless they're in the between two extremes because they have to bitch about both sides. That's all they know how to do. That's, that's literally, they're all just fucking human algorithms that bitch about both sides. And since one side is clearly fucked up and one side isn't, they have to invent a liberal threat out of whole cloth that is equal to the actual threat from the right. That's why you get liberal cancel culture. That's why you get this campus speech code bullshit. That's why you get these people just martyring themselves 
because the liberal mob has driven us out of the public square when they've, they've driven you nowhere. You get any job you want. You call your friends, you'll get any job you want. But they desperately need equally malevolent villains on both sides of the equation to continue to function in their very protective, very profitable little niche. So, And since there isn't one, they have to make one up. And they're all doing it. That's the thing. That's why I do keep track of this so- sort of this sort of media, this sort of the podcast and the, the columns and, and the shit on MSNBC. They're all professing to the same God, which is Donald Trump is very, very bad, but liberals are just as bad. Liberals are very nearly, the extremes on the left are very nearly just as bad, which is why you need those reasonable conservatives in the middle. And that's how they justify their big paychecks, and that's how they justify their existence in the media. And they're going to go right on doing it until, I don't know, doomsday, or I guess Joe Biden gets elected, in which case they can swing well, then, their guns then around. Then it's going to be the and right. They'll swing their guns around, and it'll be uh, deficit, deficit, deficit. The, the canceling of the suburbs is what I'm really looking forward to. Well, where will <laughs> where will Tucker Carlson live if the suburbs are canceled? You know, the uh-huh. uh, we Seriously. we did hear the best nicknames for him. Uh, from Charlie Pierce. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Lord Salisbury Steak and the Earl of Fish Sticks. So yep. uh, we, yep. we, we thoroughly enjoy that. But and apparently, apparently he's on vacation. Now. Yeah, he's upstate on a farm playing with other wingnuts. <laughs> but he'll, he's fine. He's just fine. He'll be back in a week or two or three or four, whatever. Just tanned and rested and ready to come right back. I don't know. Little... You know, these Fox News hosts go on vacation and they don't, some of them don't come back. So. Well, uh, like Eric Boland went on vacation and never came back, but he did come back because now he's on my Sinclair broadcasting station talking about America every week. I, I, I turn on my local television station. There's Eric fucking bowling uh, with a job. Apparently he just cannot be canceled no matter what he does, no matter how, how many dick pics he sends, no matter how offensive he is, it is, it is there's a law somewhere that says people like that must always have a job in front of the camera spewing right wing bullshit. And I, I don't know. I wish there was a liberal law like that, but there isn't. Speaking of vacation and cancel culture, uh-huh. yes, I was in Twitter jail for the fourth time this week. Oh, my goodness. I, I remember time. that. It didn't last very long this time. No. They sent me a very nice note saying, delete this tweet. I looked at it, and this time they stumped me. It was so weird, though. It was like you had pressed enter too early. It was like three words, and it was an incomplete sentence. Yeah, it, it no, it was not. It was a back and forth. Some right wing asshole stepped into my Twitter stream and decided to uh-huh. come at me about something or other, and he decided to call me stupid, and I called him stupid, and we called each other stupid, and uh, he said, "Hey, asshole, I could do this all day," and I said, "You know, like, please proceed." That's literally mm-hmm. all I wrote, and that yeah, was, it was weird. That. It was is that please go ahead after you go right ahead. Yeah, that was that's the tweet what got you blocked. that or, Jack yeah. decided was so offensive that I needed to be shut down from Twitter it until so I deleted weird. it. Well, not really, because this is my fourth time, and it's pretty clear to me at this point that there is somebody out there who does not want me talking on social media, and mm-hmm. that they just report everything, and something will stick. Now. I think they might have gone a little overboard because apparently all the blue checks got got <laughs> got shut yeah. down this week for about three hours. Oh. It was like, and you know what, Blue Gal, we'll all remember where we were the day the blue checks. <laughs> you know, it's one of the great national tragedies is all of the elite people who, you know, who don't respond to my tweets. Right. Um, all got shut down for an afternoon and we all just ran naked through the streets going, ah, right, right, freedom, right. freedom. freedom. <laughs> it was great. It was glorious. It was short lived, but it was glorious. It was like running to the sprinklers uh, of Twitter <laughs> with your pants off. It was, it was a great, and beautiful thing. Um, happy birthday to my wife. Oh, you know, I, I want to say to people, it's not too late to send me a birthday card because uh, I love birthday cards. Yes. And you gave me three birthday cards and you do this. He get, I always save his, I save everybody's birthday card, but I have a special drawer for your birthday cards. And one of them was very silly. It had a dog in a recliner saying, you know, you're an amazing mom and great wife. And I just love watching you do everything you do Yeah. <laughs> from my recliner. Yes. <laughs> Well, but uh, it, anyway, I often your, feel your cards that, are very loving and romantic. And I, I often I feel that my wife them. works much harder than I do. So, oh, um, and vice versa. It's so yeah. funny because you say that, and then I, I said something to Junior Dude about that. That oh no, don't don't go get drift glass for that because he does too much, and he, in his confused, you know, not un- fully understanding social <laughs> <laughs> cues, said. But wait, he says that about you. 
We both do too much. You know what the problem is, honey? These lazy children and cats. They're the problem. <laughs> the cats. They're the problem. The lazy, lazy cats. Yeah, they're pretty bad. <laughs> I did want to mention uh, occasionally uh, because I'm you know quarantined at home. Um, no, I, I occasionally go through my old letters. Uh, not correspondence from my lovely uh, readers and the listeners to this podcast, but um, I, I went through um, old correspondence from wingnut acquaintances of mine from the days, from the olden days, from the olden oh, times. Lord. And I have a very large file of them because, and, and they have stopped entirely. Uh, really? Yes. Uh, once Trump really kind of comprehensively shit the bed, uh-huh. uh, uh you know, because this was all about just a just the most offensive, like bug eyed Barack Obama bullshit. Pelosi's mm-hmm. going to kill us all. Killery, killery Benghazi. You know, my hands are bloody, but I don't give a shit. Going back to you know shirtless pictures of Vladimir Putin from like 2012. These people were wired, hardwired white supremacists. Since since they you know since they were in their twenties and now they're in mm-hmm. their sixties and seventies and they're old and they're mean and they're white and they they're absolutely Fox News demographic. So mm-hmm. I sort of keep track of them because this is where they're going and uh, they have been unfailingly accurate in as in my personal barometer. I don't need to be I don't need to go to the diners and stick microphones in the mouths of idiots. I can just I I have exposure to them every day. I don't need to be Selena Zito and and talk to people. Be the Trump voter whisperer. Um, but I went back to to 2000, I think 14. Uh, it was 2014, and it was it was the uh, Ebola outbreak during the Obama. Oh yeah, okay, right, right. And it, it was it was a long quote from Thomas Sowell, who was writing in Town Hall. And Thomas Sowell, you might not know him, is is an older African American gentleman who has made a very good living telling wing nuts and racists that they're not really the racists, that liberals are the racists. And there's a really good living to be made if you want to completely sell out your conscience and be the black guy who tells the racist that they're really the cool ones and the liberals are the real bad ones. He's an academic diamond in silk. Yeah, he is. He is. And he's he, he has acade- uh, academic credentials, he right? Does. And he's a favorite among conservatives because he will tell Republicans exactly what they want to hear. Um, he and this was in town hall. Currently, you will find him on Mark Levine's program, oh, um, Lord. telling Republicans that. Uh, let me scroll down, make sure I have the quote correct. Um, the concept of systemic racism has no meaning. Um, the left uses that phrase. Uh, the left's use of that phrase recalls propaganda tax- tactics of Joseph Goebbels. And if this <sighs> if this goes on, the United States could reach the point of no return. So he is an apocalyptic asshole who's always been that way, who tells, you know, wing nuts, the racist drivel they want to hear. Uh-huh. So this was, but this was his hot take on the Obama administration during the wow. Ebola outbreak, which killed in the United States, I think like four people, five mm-hmm. people um, successfully controlled. It was, it was not, uh, it, it did not sweep this country like the current pandemic we are in. So what did Thomas Sowell have to say about Barack Obama just six years ago? And I'm going to read you this whole thing. Various former members of the Obama administration are telling the same story of information and advice from knowledgeable and experienced officials being ignored by this vain and headstrong man. You know, back in the 18th century, Edmund Burke pointed out that whatever the institutions of government, most of the outcomes of what a government does, quote, must depend on the exercise of the powers which are left at large to the prudence and uprightness of the ministers of state. What did the American voters know about the prudence and uprightness of this untried man, the elected president, as a result of his glib rhetoric and his racial symbolism? It's not just bad luck when a reckless gamble turns out disastrously. No one knows at this point how big the Ebola danger may turn out to be. But what we do know is that official reassurances about this and other dangers have become worthless. Worthless, blue gal. Worthless. The erosion of constitutional government over the years has become, under the Obama administration, a deluge of arbitrary edicts and defiant lawlessness protected by a grossly politicized Department of Justice. It may be time to reconsider or consider reorganizing the institutions of government so that high officials who try to reassure the public about medical crises are not officials who, quote, serve at the pleasure of the president. 
nor should the attorney general, whose duties is to enforce the law, be part of an administration whose lawbreakers the Justice Department can protect from prosecution. That was Thomas fucking soul six years ago. And now we're in wow. the middle of an actual pandemic with an actual lunatic using the actual Justice Department as his personal thug squad, ignoring expert advice, ignoring advice of doctors, putting the entire American population at risk on purpose. And Thomas Sowell is sitting over on Mark Levin's show bitching about liberals using systemic racism as Goebbels-like propaganda to try to crush America, which may be destroyed if, if Joe Biden <laughs> is elected. This is the shit they listen to every day. And this is the shit these people of have been listening to for 20 yeah. years. 20 years. So please don't... So when it was Obama in charge of Ebola, which was by every measure a tremendous success. Yes, it was a glib, untried, lawless lunatic who won't listen to experts. And we really have, and we really have to take all healthcare out of the hands of the executive because branch, they can't right? Be we have to just—they can't be trusted. They can't be trusted, and and, the, right? and because it always gets politicized, yeah. and we mustn't we mustn't allow that to happen. And nobody has grabbed him by his hair and and shoved his face back into this quote and said, "What do you think now, Tom? What do you think now? Yeah. Yeah. What about now? Because these people don't live in that world anymore." They live in a world where the before time never happened. Obama never had. I, I, How they treated Barack Obama. And now that uh, the notorious RBG has mm -hmm. cancer again, mm -hmm. uh, they want to forget all about the yeah. <laughs> the Supreme Court rules that they well, set up for Barack Obama. Will. If, if, if she, God forbid, yeah. something happens over the next several months, um, that they'll just ram through another Supreme Court nominee. Now, I'm not yeah. as a hundred percent sure as I was. I it would have been six months ago because I think there was an yeah. absolute ice cold panic running through the veins of elected Republicans. Going, shit, we could lose everything. We could lose mm -hmm. everything. And and if 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 they if Democrats really do run the board, they can start impeaching mm -hmm. Supreme Court justices. They can right. start. They can impeach. Right. Well, they can certainly start auditing their uh, auditing every single federal judge's tax oh, yeah. returns. And did you lie under oath to get this job? And right. oh, you did. Right. Oh, right. okay. You know, because I don't remember ever seeing any information about where the hell Brett Kavanaugh got all that money to pay off all those bills. Yeah, to pay off those um, debts. Yep. So I, I am slightly more hopeful about the survival instinct of of mm -hmm. Republicans kicking in at the last minute. But um, well, and especially since Mitch McConnell is running for reelection. Well, I think that, like you say, I think that's that survival instinct. He, I've said this before. He knows how to count votes. Mm -hmm. He knows which way winds blow. And uh, <laughs> just just listening this week to Susan Collins say, "I'm not getting involved in presidential politics." Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I don't even, I don't know what to say to that except. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Yeah, that's that is <laughs> entirely your job. That is a hundred percent your yeah. job, and you don't want to do your job. And yeah. I know you. This is the president from your yeah. party. Well, and um, I I do want to say one last thing before we move on to the news roundup about okay. Goya Foods. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the week, and the the silk shirt holding yeah. up black beans. Uh, this is yeah. the this is the week when Donald Trump, uh, and first of all, his daughter Ivanka Trump posed holding a a can of delicious, delicious Goya beans, which she has never eaten in her life. And Donald yeah. Trump posed for an Oval Office photo with several Goya food products one day after his daughter tweeted support of them. Uh, this was at the... Uh, on old re on the Resolute, Resolute desk. desk. And I, I invite everyone to, to cast your mind back. I know it's hard to do. I know it's against the law to the before time when every mm -hmm. Republican you know lost their fucking mind because Barack Obama put his feet up on the Resolute desk. And mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. and this went on for days. These are my wingnut, my wingnut acquaintances from my previous life all lost their shit. Can you believe this? Can you believe the disrespect this man has for the office? Oh my God. Dwight Eisenhower sat at that desk. Can you believe that man put his feet up? And then you show them pictures of Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush. And you yep. know the Bears are doing really well this year. What do you think of the Bears? Again, <laughs> they never change their mind. It doesn't matter how many times you wallop them upside the head with a two by four. They never ever fucking change their mind. They're all going to go to the grave believing Barack Obama was the most corrupt president in history, and that, mm -hmm. that Donald Trump 
uh, is 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 possibly the greatest president in history, or he'll, he's about to be martyred and the election stolen from him by the Democrats. The the that is all settled history. the The problem I'm having, which I have consistently, is the people who want to find a middle ground in there. <laughs> the people who keep insisting that yeah, all that's true. I will stipulate to all of that. But look, liberals are pretty bad too. Let's talk about how bad liberals are. Let's talk about how awful they are. Let's how, talk about how they want to limit my speech. And that's the problem I have with the Harper's letter. And that's the problem mm-hmm. I have with this entire discussion. Why the fuck are we talking about a bunch of privileged white people who still have their jobs feeling threatened in their little universes by a bunch of liberals like me saying, maybe we should hold you accountable to some professional standard out there, some professional standard, some code of conduct, some some metric that every other profession would demand of you. Like, if you keep fucking up and being wrong month after month after month, eventually you should be fired. As opposed to, well, you know, we, we want all opinions here. All opinions should be, even people who are just fuck-ups should have a, a, a voice at the New York Times. Really? Well, I'd like to be on the New York Times. How about me? Well, no, I'm sorry. That position is filled. So, That's the part I really do worry about. The people who will survive this apocalypse and define the next discussion we're going to have are going to be people who are going to come out of this swearing that the left was just as bad as the right and the people who saved the democracy, who saved our republic, are those lovely, reasonable conservatives in the middle. And that's where our conversation will be pinned for the next series of apocalyptic nonsenses that that we live through. All right, let's do a news roundup, Drift Glass. I'm sorry. Did I get too much on my high horse? No, you're good. Just fine. You did fantastic. Thank you. Don't... I'm just I'm just seeking praise. <laughs> I just want a lot of praise. I don't want to be canceled by my own wife. It feels bad. <laughs> hey, everybody. Send me a birthday card if you want. Yeah. It's not too late. Uh, oh, and do keep my dad in your thoughts, by the way. Yeah. Uh, anniversaries are hard. Yes. And many of you know I was born on my mom's birthday. She passed away. Just a few days before Donald Trump was elected, we're all very grateful that she didn't live through any of the Trump years. Mm-hmm. So yesterday was her birthday, as well as mine. And the day before that was my dad's mother's birthday. And tomorrow, the 18th, is my mom and dad's would have been their 58th wedding anniversary. So anniversaries are hard. And I just want to keep him in my thoughts. And and if you are that kind of person, if that's something that you do, please keep my dad, Ian, in your thoughts this weekend. Mm -hmm. All right. News roundup. Uh, Another 1.3 million people filed unemployment last week, the 17th straight week that new claims exceeded 1 million. You know, it's real nice. The Senate is on vacation right now. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not doing anything about extending the $600 extra that people might need for their. Maybe they're following Donald Trump's advice and finding something new. Go find, find something, something new. Find something new. Yeah. They're gonna, a lot of them are going to have to in November. Yeah. Well, and speaking of finding something new, um, Donald Trump replaced his campaign manager, Brad Four Ferrari Parscale, with four months to go before the presidential election, proving once again that Hope Hicks' hoo-ha is the most reliable career killer in Washington, D.C. I don't think that's very nice. I, hey, <laughs> look, at her, look at her record. What is the deal with with everyone? This is true. Everyone that she dates, he fires. Right, and they're all married when she when she when she sleeps. Some with them. of them are. Yeah, uh, I, I think Corey Lewandowski was divorced. I think he was already uh, divorced. But I don't know. You don't play with Donald Trump's toys. I'm, that's all I'm thinking. Is you I, know. it's something's going on there because yeah. it is four for four. Yeah. on on the whole picks thing, it is. Mm-hmm. Five months into the pandemic and the White House can't get its message straight. Should the public listen to Fauci, Trump, Navarro, or Chuck Woolery? Yeah. Chuck Woolery, who canceled his Twitter. Temporarily. He'll be back. Uh, A White House coronavirus task force document shows 18 states are in the, quote, red zone, unquote, for COVID-19 cases, with more than 100 new cases per 100,000 population last week. That's very bad. Can I say something about that? I I wrote a... I'm way behind on my thank you notes, but I wrote a few of them Uh this week. And one went to Florida and I sighed and, you know, just holding those people in my thought. And then I had one for Arizona. I was just like, oh, gosh, you know, again, feeling horrible for the people of Arizona and the people of Florida. And the next one after that was Portland, Oregon. Yeah. And I lost it. I just lost it. Uh, 
what's happening in Portland right now is fascism. Fascism. Outright, absolute is, fascism. If In case you don't know, basically, uh, Trump thugs are pulling people off the street and putting them in unmarked vans. Yes. And uh, the U.S. military, by the way, is not supposed to be arresting U.S. citizens. No. That's not their job. And these guys do not, these thugs do not have identification. No. That have is... been authorized by local authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is Gestapo tactics it's going absolute. on in an American city. And, and all the people who are wringing their hands, especially the Republicans who are wringing their hands now, as well they should. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Uh, when did you all get so delicate about black bagging and renditioning people with no evidence? Mm -hmm. I thought that was a mm -hmm. thing you liked to do. I thought that was a big deal. And didn't, didn't Rush Limbaugh do whole shows on how important it was to do that? And, you know, I appreciate the fact that everyone is delicate about this. I think it's terrifying. I think the Department of Homeland Security doing this for basically graffiti purposes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rolling in, a, you know, a battalion of unmarked cars, unmarked vans populated by thugs and masks, dragging pedestrians off the street and throwing them in vans is as, as, uh, as Charlie Pierce said, that's Pinochet shit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's happening on the streets of an American city right now with the direct involvement and approval of the United States federal government. Right. And the it, acting head of Homeland Security. Yeah. Don't get me started about creating a Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. I mean, that was step one. Mm -hmm. And and all of them are going to be able to sue the federal government and win over this. I, I if sincerely, they survive it. I don't know what's going on. Do you, no one knows what's no, going on. No. I do know that there are a whole bunch of reputable sources all saying, holy shit, this is actually happening. This is not a joke. This is, We're not kidding. Um, and I hate to say this, but this pairs really perfectly mm -hmm. with something else that's going on in the news, which is the Trump administration um, trying to falsify COVID data. Mm -hmm. um, yep. To quote Paul Krugman, the Trump administration is trying to solve the problem of the pandemic by suppressing information. It is both unbelievable and totally predictable. Uh, this is the first time in modern U.S. epidemic history this has ever happened. The U.S. coronavirus data has already disappeared after the Trump administration shifted control from the CDC to HHS. The CDC.gov hospital capacity dashboard has gone dark. The director has said the CDC still has access to the data, but apparently the public no longer does. This is terrifying. This really is straight up Stalinist bullshit. This is like, oh, the numbers are bad. Lie about the numbers. Oh, we have dissidents. Throw them in a van. And this is all coming from the top. This is not some freelance asshole acting on their own. This is all coming from a, a overtly fascistic white nationalist White House with the approval of 97% of the Republican Party and the approval of pretty much every elected Republican in Congress. From Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear, quote, I just learned the attorney general is asking the Boone Circuit Court judge to void every COVID-19 rule or regulation. Guess which party, Jesus. folks? Jesus, yeah. And prevent any future orders needed to respond to escalating cases. With no rules, there is no chance of getting kids back to school. We will lose over $10 billion in state revenue in our economy, and many Kentuckians will die. I hope everyone understands how scary and reckless this is. Well, we do. Um, we do, and we know why. We know why they're doing it. And let's bounce to the other end of the spectrum, shall we? <laughs> sure. Um, Georgia's governor, Brian Kemp, has banned Georgia cities and counties from mandating masks and face coverings and is suing Atlanta's mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, because she refused to abide by his new law that bans municipalities from enacting mask mandates. By the way, Keisha Lance Bottoms' family has COVID, so this is, you know, very personal to her, but it also is she's trying to protect her city. Notice how easily the governor, the white racist governor of Georgia is willing to take on a black woman who is the mayor of a city under his jurisdiction. The largest city under his jurisdiction. Yeah. On the other and, hand. And and I'm wondering if he's going to sue Walmart and Target. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I would bet that since Walmart is a gazillion times bigger than Georgia and can really ruin him with a flick of a finger, can drop a house on him, that he will not do that. But mm-hmm. the fact that Walmart and CVS are leading the way in the America's response is just so desperately sad. But it's also very telling. This is how mm-hmm. you move corporations to action. And when when you think about this, I mean, you and I are democratic activists. If what we need to do is point out that the Republican Party is racist, which is a fact, mm-hmm. and call out corporations that collude with them. Mm-hmm. And that's all we do. Yeah. And we don't talk about marginal tax rates no. and health care nope. and on and on. It's simply... Really, you're siding with this. Yep. You're siding people getting sick. Mm-hmm. You're siding with cops killing black people, unarmed black people. And this is what the Senate race in Georgia now is about. Yes. Yep. People are r- Republicans are running against Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And so corporations, really, you're going to be for that? And, and again, as we've said before, I don't care if they just appear to be, you know, tolerant Mm -hmm, i don't really mm -hmm. care i don't know what's in their heart i don't care i want them to feel enormous economic pressure Mm -hmm. to do the right thing and and as we were talking about during a break um our kids think gay marriage happened overnight they think it happened in a year yeah and they didn't see the decades and decades of work but it 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 happened in a year for them from from their perspective because it spiked up like um covid cases in florida Right. I mean, it's just boom. It's just suddenly it's all cool. It's everywhere and everyone's cool with it. And let's just move on, um, which is great. But but in part, that's because corporations like pet, like Coca-Cola mm-hmm. and Disney and I can go on said, uh, no, we're not going to tolerate intolerance because so much of our talent is gay, lesbian, queer, transgendered. Etc. Or friends and won't put up with it. And won't put up with it. Uh-huh. Allies, I should say. Allies, right. Mm-hmm. Won't put up with it. And there goes the money. And <laughs> so, there, the money's oh, green. <laughs> see, we like money and there goes all that money. So let's just, let's all be cool with it now. And right. just like that, it became uh, the, the, the tectonic shift under the feet of the American culture happened. And nobody right. freaked out. Nobody died. A bunch of people got angry because of wedding cakes and nonsense like that. But hopefully uh, that battle is over and it's over because pressure was economic pressure, shame and economic pressure were brought to bear on people who in power who had to move or lose their, their economic position and their power. The White House's presidential personnel office has been conducting loyalty tests with health officials and political appointees across federal agencies. Mm-hmm. It's officially the swamp. It is. And lest you think this is new, let's remember how the Bush administration screened people for important positions in the newly conquered country of Iraq. It was abortion, political loyalty. Did you contribute to my campaign? And your competence to do anything was completely beside the point. This is a Republican problem, not a Trump problem. One problem we don't have to worry about anymore is Kanye West, who has decided it is the better part of valor to not humiliate himself and his family by trying to run for president, according to Fox News. Now, Fox News lies all the time, so this might not be true, but it's just one less thorn in my side that I have to worry about. So that's good. Stick I'll with music, that. Kanye. Yeah. Put out another album, Kanye, yeah. please. Be crazy on your own time. We'd love to have another Kanye album in the world. All right. 72% of voters say the country is on the wrong track. A 16-point jump since March. Yeah. Uh, Kelly McEnany says President Trump wants to open schools, quote, and when he says open, he means open and full. Kids being able to attend each and every day at their school. And here's the pull quote. The science should not stand in the way of this. That's just straight out of Stalin's regime. Maybe parenthood should stand in a way of this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there, I don't have it with me, so I can't. I can't read it, but there was a wonderful letter published on Twitter from a school district um, signed by multiple teachers saying, you know, we are already human shields in every school shooting. We're not going to do this. Well, I'm just jumping ahead to local news. Uh, This Thursday, the Chicago mayor, Lori Lightfoot, called 
the aforementioned Kayla McEnany. Hey, Karen, watch your mouth. After McEnany <laughs> referred to her as a derelict mayor. So, you know what? I stand with Lori Lightfoot. Yep. And the attacks on Lori Lightfoot are sexist and racist. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it. Uh, she has a very, very tough job. And there's a lot of violence in Chicago and mm -hmm. a gun problem that comes from Indiana. Mm -hmm. that was there before, mm -hmm. before Lori Lightfoot was mayor. And uh, I just don't have time for criticism of her. I really don't. Nope. Sorry. Falling on deaf ears. Trump won't sign a COVID-19 relief bill unless it has a tax cut for the rich. Mm -hmm. uh, we already mentioned that in Portland, the acting head of DHS is using brown shirts and unmarked vehicles to black bag protesters. So we'll move on to the Washington Post, which the headline of the article is, Who would kick millions off health care insurance in the middle of a pandemic? Yes, Trump. In the midst of a pandemic... When Americans most need health insurance and millions can't find work, the Trump administration wants to kick Americans off their health insurance if they aren't working. Heartless, but true. <clears throat> this week, the, the Trump administration and the state of Arkansas asked the Supreme Court to allow reinstatement of Medicaid work requirements. This disastrous policy was struck down by lower courts last year after causing 18,000 low-income Arkansas residents to lose their insurance. Subsequent research found that 95% of residents targeted by the policy were working or had qualified for an exemption. They were kicked off Medicaid all the same. That's because the program reporting requirements were so onerous and confusing that it was nearly impossible to prove compliance. They're trying to take away Americans' insurance in the middle of a fucking pandemic. If that's not enough, then nothing will ever be enough for you. And finally, you want to take this? Missouri spent $15 million in coronavirus relief funds on boosting tourism. Yeah. You know what? I ain't going to Missouri. Nope. So, no. And, and it would be easy for us to do. We're right yeah. across the river. Yeah. If I go, I will I will take the absolute minimum amount of currency with me to get a lunch and leave. That's I want to go to the airport, pick someone up, drop them off, and come home. I don't want to spend a dime in that freaking backwater asshole state. Um, <laughs> we love our listeners in Missouri. Hang in there. We do. We do. And, and we understand that this, none of this is your doing. Newspaper headline that we saw today in our local newsletter, our local newspaper headline this week. Today. today this today, morning. Yeah. Trump's second term plan, hazy. Yeah. Got it, everybody? Hazy. We're not sure what he has planned, but. It's going to be awesome. It, it, it'll it's evolve. hazy. It's all hazy. It will probably involve <laughs> Ted Nugent and <laughs> some automatic weapons and a lot of uh, be big, beautiful things. By the way, we've been promised that next eight weeks are going to be amazing like no one's ever seen. The best no things ever. No one's ever seen ever. how amazing it'll be. A lot of great thinkers. Details will come later, but it'll, it'll be great. It'll be great. Again, if this is just another florida real estate asshole trying to upsell you a piece of shit that he knows is going to fall apart the minute you buy it and if you're dumb enough to buy it for a second time oh I, someone replied to my tweet and said has he figured out his first term plan yet yeah, well his first you know, term his stay first out term of plan, jail you know that was, his first term plan was to lose and to go on fox news and have a career yeah, doing that and have a job a permanent yeah. job talking politics and shit on fox news each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's Internet Kitty is a pair of cows. These were sent in by Dogfaced Herman. Uh, these are cow new cows at the Soul Homestead. This is Soul Homestead is not a factory farm, folks. It's a, a forever home for, for beautiful animals. Uh, Galway is white and Rosebud is brown. They are five months old, and they weigh several hundred pounds each. Rosebud likes to lick your hand and enjoys head scratches. Oh. Galway, not so much. We've got a <laughs> cat just like, like both of that. Our house. Yeah. <laughs> you can pick up uh, Olive and t in our house. Olive will snuggle. But uh, Bosco and uh, Barack Hussein, the Kenyan usurper, not so, the big cats, not so much. They don't like to be held no they, they like to be beheld Gal but that's it yes. yeah. <laughs> galway and rosebud eat of course freshly poured heifer food our fake sponsor this week <laughs> 
Whether you serve farm feed perfection or dollar store dreck, your cow will sit in the meadow and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Galway and Rosebud at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet or farm animal to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. If you send me a birthday card, I will keep it. (laughs) Just so you know, it will be in a shoebox and I will keep it. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions, letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information, GoFundMe, merch, all kinds of good stuff. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? You know, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties don't think Tucker Carlson is really catching fish this weekend. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.